Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. Okay, I have 50 unexpected bolos for you guys. Um, these are items that I shared in my Bolo Buddies Facebook group. And what I do is I search eBay for active auctions, things that I haven't shared before, or you now sometimes there are things I've shared before, but maybe it's been a while. And I share those in my Facebook group. And I post the auctions and we all watch them, but I know from time to time, more often than not, I never go back and check to see what they actually sold for. But when I post them, they are already a bolo item. So what I have done is I have grabbed 50 of those for you guys, and we are going to look at what they actually sold for. So these are typically big money bolos, might be harder to find. But if you don't know about them, you're never going to find them because you don't know. So I'm going to share those with you. Now, I do invite people in my Facebook group to message me if they have an active auction that is a BOLO. And I would say probably 10 to 12 of these came from members of the group. So what that does is it helps te teach people in the group, but it also gets eyes on their auctions. So if you are in my Bolo Buddies Facebook group and you ever have an auction that is a BOLO, please feel free to reach out and send me a private message, okay? Um, we're gonna get started here. If you're not in my Facebook group, let me show you real quick what that looks like. I will link it down below in the description of the video. So this is my Facebook group, Bolo Buddies Resellers Thrifters Unite, eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, and Etsy. We are open to talking about other selling platforms. These are just the ones that I happen to use at the time I made the group. So come on over and join. Um, we're getting close to 35,000 members. I also have another group. If you don't want all of the um, everybody posting in my other group, only I post. In that group, there's about 20,000 members. So um, it's just smaller and not as uh, busy. So you're welcome to join both groups if you like. Again, links are down in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Pinterest. And I think that's it. But anyway, um, let's get started here. Let's check out some big money bolos. And these are typically, you know, they can be unexpected. Okay, so the first item. All right, so a member of my Bolo Buddies Facebook group actually sent this one to me. I wasn't sure how high this one was going to go. It already had some bids, but I figured there were so many figures and so many weapons. Sometimes the weapons alone, let me make sure I'm on screen share here. Okay. Sometimes the weapons alone can go for $50 to $100. I know Yard Sales and Dreams, if you guys haven't checked out her channel, go check it out. She picked up a huge lot of vintage Masters of the Universe and she was selling some of the weapons for like a hundred bucks. Um, I can't remember exactly what some of them sold for, but um, big money. She hit the jackpot. She has a whole video on it. So definitely go check out that video. And look at these guys. I have never seen some of these. Um, so MOTU stands for Masters of the Universe. That is something that is searched on eBay. So definitely try to fit that into your title if you can. Um, but yeah, this only went for $93. So maybe a reseller is going to buy this and part it out because I mean, how many figures are there? Eight. I mean, even if you sold each figure for 10 bucks, I mean, that puts you at 80 bucks and I would think they're worth more than that means that they're from the eighties. All right, you guys, I'm not going to spend that long on each, um, each listing. I was just talking it out. So let me know if you guys have any, um, info on the items in this listing. The next item that sold is this vintage Washington Redskins NFL football megaphone. Um, it's a megaphone. They have two pictures here, you guys. Um, I some of the sometimes I'm just like I have no words, you know. Like this is super super cool. Uh, I don't know if I would have picked it up or not. I think I would like to think that I would have, but. Um, I will now. This sold for $417 and the buyer paid shipping and there were 61 bids on that. The next item that sold is this vintage Bell RT motorcycle 
helmet. And this was also a member of the group that sent me this auction. They picked this up at an estate sale for $10 and it sold on auction for $493 and 88 cents and the buyer paid shipping. So, um, if it's somebody from my group that sent me the, um, listing, I like to try to include some info. I don't always get it, but when I do, I will pass that along in this video as well. The next item that sold, I love this. And I have actually had a few people message me and they are finding items like this and selling them for big money. So that is super, super exciting. Um, this little elephant, yeah, it's a 1962 elephant and it's a squeak toy, you guys. It's a rubber squeak toy. It's darling, super cute. Um, it went for $74 and it even has condition issues. Check out the ears. So you can see here, they've got a nice picture of the bottom. Um, always, always put a picture of the item showing uh, the brand if it has um, that information. And it looks like it's kind of stained. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. Maybe it is. See the blue? I don't know. Either way, super cute. $74 plus shipping. Okay. This one is absolutely crazy, but it almost doesn't surprise me because Dukes of Hazards is highly collectible. Um, pretty much anything Dukes of Hazard is going to be a big money bolo, whether that's $50 or $1,000. It's just, you're going to make some money. But always look comps because I'm sure there's some items that are bread and butter, but check out these straws. So these sold for $2,735 for some straws. And I'm guessing, you know, they're not really paying for the straws. They want the advertising right here. Um, so yeah, definitely collectors. Uh, 39 bids on that one. Of course, we don't know for sure if it paid. There's a couple things that we can do here to try to figure it out. And I can show you guys that. We can first go to the feedback and we can type in, we'll just type in Duke. Okay, so there's no feedback, but that's not necessarily like the only thing to take into consideration because a lot of people that buy these collectible things, they don't want to put their feedback um, because they just, they don't want to share feedback on it. So let's visit a uh, seller's store and maybe I'm going to type in Dukes. And I'm not getting a match. And let's go over to their solds. And we just have the one item. So what that tells me is either the buyer paid or this person decided that they were going to keep the item and not relist it. And this was sold back on October. I'm sorry, August 27th. And so that was like a month ago. So I'm going to say if it were me and somebody did not pay, the first thing I would do would be to relist the item. So I'm going to guess that this was a good sale. But again, I not 100%. I can't confirm it. I can just kind of run through the little tricks that I have to see if things actually got paid for. The next item that sold is this vintage Halloween. It's a uh, Tricks or Treats Witch Sucker Holder. So Basically, you put a sucker through here and people used to give these out to kids at Trick or Treat, I would assume. Um, this sold for $204.49 on auction. And you can see it doesn't, it's unpunched, which makes it probably more valuable, but it's got the awesome Halloween vintage graphic and vintage Halloween is super, super collectible. So always be on the lookout for that. The next item that sold are these uh, Ken heads. And I don't know if like the person worked for Mattel or, or what, but this is really, really cool. Two dozen assorted heads and it's not complete. Imagine if it would have been complete, right? Sold for $1,075. And I'm guessing just this uh, box is probably pretty collectible by itself. You know, who has a box like that? So definitely a big money bolo, probably not something that any of us are going to happen upon, but this person did. So you just never know. Um, I think most of us would have picked that up if we would have saw it, how much we would have paid for it. Uh, that's, you know, up to each individual person. The next item is this vintage antique Levi's pleated 
buckle, uh, front buckle back, big E jacket. So, um, let me get you. Well, you, there's not, hopefully there's a better shot of the tag. There we go. Okay. So it's got a big E. If you see the big E, definitely, um, definitely pick it up. But I will tell you from what I understand, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I have heard that they are now making, bringing the big E back. And I know they're doing that with the Lisa Frank also. The capital L and the capital F used to be all vintage, but I heard that they're also now doing big L um, and big F again. So that's going to make it harder for us as resellers to tell if things are vintage for Lisa Frank. I will tell you that Levi's has other um, factors that if you know vintage clothing, you're going to know if it's vintage or not, I would assume. Um, this sold for $2,254 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item that sold actually belonged to a member of my Bolo Buddies Facebook group, and she paid $3 for this doll, put it up for auction. It's an antique Russian painted bisque terracotta girl doll, uh, Dunave, Dunaviv, I'm not sure how to say it, D-U-N-A-E-V factory ussr so here's the little tag and i gotta say that if i would have saw this i probably would have walked right past it um how about you guys look at its legs unbelievable here's the head yeah 660 dollars. let's see what she started it at she started this auction at 200 dollars. so she knew it had some value starting it at 200, but it went up to 660. The next item that sold is this ma the mask VHS. It is factory sealed. It has Jim Carrey. Um, it's a VHS, you guys. VHS are super hot right now. Uh, definitely scan the barcode if you see one, but this is kind of a newer trending thing. So, um, don't be afraid to price high um, unless there's a whole bunch that are factory sealed exactly like what you have that aren't priced high, then you're probably not going to get, you know, a higher price. But if there's no others listed, I'm going to price mine high. This one sold for $224.50 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item. Okay, so a member of my group sent me this. She bought this from the Ray Dunn studio in 2006. Now here's what I want to bring to your attention. Most Ray Dunn is mass produced. You're not going to get big money for them. However, some of them are older and these are the ones you want to find because they are worth big money. Do you see this thumbprint? That would be a good indicator that it could be worth money. Um, the gal that sent me this actually emailed Ray Dunn. Okay, right here. And look, kindly Ray. So either she has people working for her signing her name or she actually responded, which is super, super cool. So she said, yes, that was the gallery that I co-owned with two other potters called Vertigris, I think is how you say it. Our studios were in the back of the shop. And yes, it was a handmade piece that you may have bought directly from me. So yeah, that's from Ray Dunn. How cool is that? Let's see. She said, we had the shop from 2000 to 2007. It's so cool that you were actually there. Kindly Ray. So um, she said, there are very few pieces with my thumbprint on the back. You have a very rare piece of handmade pottery. I mean, think about how big Ray Dunn is now. You know, I mean, that is fantastic. This ended up selling for $1,710 with free shipping. The next item are these little kittles. Little kittles are definitely a bolo. You can sell these individually. You can sell them as a lot. What's cool about these is they've got the extra clothes. They've got the books. Oh my goodness. I think I would have parted this out, but the seller, I mean, I think $842 is good, but these might be really, really rare. Um, if anybody knows for sure, let me know in the comments. I'd be really curious to see how you guys would have, uh, listed this. I mean, it's got the little characters. I mean, somebody may have gotten a hundred to $200 a piece for these. I have no idea, but
but maybe something to uh, look up. It looks like they're all the nursery rhymes and uh, princesses and stuff. So really, really cool. So $842 plus shipping on that. The next item that sold is this Daisy Kingdom Annie dress. Um, let's see. This is what's on it. So Daisy Kingdom, I know can be collectible. Plus it's a little girl's dress. If you guys have not seen my toddler dresses bolo category video, um, definitely go check that out. There is some big money in some of these toddler and baby dresses. This one sold for $242.50. And she picked this up at an estate sale for $5. And this came, um, the person that listed this is the Rebel Reseller. And she is a Bolo Buddies member. So I am going to um, invite you guys to go and check out her YouTube channel because number one, she is a major Bolo finder. And I'm actually going to show you another item that she sent me. She has been, I don't, I don't know, either she's a really good sourcer or she's really lucky, but she is a Bolo finder and she does a lot of what sold videos. So again, I encourage you to go check out her channel, The Rebel Reseller. Here's the other one she sold. Oh, nope. I'm sorry. This isn't it. We'll get to it. Um, this is a 1960s vintage Notre Dame toes up knotter bobblehead. Now, bobbleheads can definitely be bolo items. Definitely look them up, especially if they look really old like this one. This sold for $416 plus shipping. All right. Vintage lace and lace trims. Okay. These are one thing that definitely range, but if you can find the old beautiful stuff like this, you're going to want to pick it up. This sold for $170. Um, and it's the, these have really pretty displays too. I'm sure that helped. But $170 plus shipping on that. The next item, okay, I don't know. I personally think that this person that listed this probably would have done better parting this out, especially with Christmas coming because these are all new in the box. This one glows in the dark. This one moves. I mean, they've all do cool things. And I could see people picking these up as uh, Christmas gifts. I mean, look at this one. And they only got $305 for all of this. And they only charged $25 shipping. So, yeah, um, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, I'm like speechless here. 16 of them. So. Let me see. What would that what would that be each? I don't know what that would be each. I was going to get my calculator out, but we can move on. You guys can figure that out. But I think that probably was a good deal for someone. So the next item that sold. OK, so this is the other one from the Rebel Reseller. And I don't know if you guys saw my video. I did a video on Boyd's Bears that are trending right now. Um, I believe they are still trending. I'm going to guess so because this was just on August 15th. Go and watch that video. Um, some of these are big money right now. This is a calendar, which I didn't even know existed, but I hope to find one someday. She sold this for $565 and she kind of specializes in plush, um, but she also sells a lot of other stuff too. If you watched the most recent um, featured members video, if you haven't watched it, go check it out. The My favorite thing that sold in the video was hers. And I'm not going to tell you what it was. You got to go watch the video. But I would have walked right past it. And it is a huge, big money bolo. And she got more than one. And I don't, I wouldn't have known. So I definitely learned something from her and from so many of my other members. That featured members video is teaching me so much. So definitely go check that out. But yeah, these mini Boyd's uh, calendar sold for 565 plus shipping. The next item is this orange and blue flower. Uh, it's a piano shawl tablecloth. Never heard of that. Um, I don't know. I, I would have looked at that and I probably would have walked right past it. I don't know how they know it's World War II. I, I don't know how people date these things. Um, 
this is one area where I'm like, gosh, I just wish I knew more. You know, I probably pass up on so many great things. This sold for $610 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this. It's a little figurine. It's memories of yesterday over the river. Here is the, um, the bottom of it. 1990, uh, 1998 Ensco, I think is how you say it. $307.61 for this. I am just curious what they started this listing at. They started it at $7.99. So either they had no idea or they knew it was valuable and they knew it would get bids. But either way, super cool bolo. Okay, so this vintage Canon camera. This also was shared by a member of my group. She paid $8 for this at a thrift store. And if I remember correctly... Um, she said she picks up cameras often and does really well. This one was untested for parts and it still sold for $87 and six cents. And you can see it's not even like in amazing condition. So definitely, um, a nice little bolo cameras. I usually pass on them because I don't know how to test them. I don't have film to test them. I don't want to test them. So I just skip them. And I know there's money that I'm missing out on. This is a Halloween vintage, um, it's a die cut and it's from the early 1920s. Again, I don't know how they date it. Sold for $466.51. Fire paid shipping. The next item also came from a member of the group. He paid $5 at a garage sale for this. And it's an old lantern. It's a Montgomery Ward lantern. And it's funny because Mont Montgomery Ward makes me think of a video that Yard Sales and Dreams did. She invited other YouTubers to go through a catalog and talk about some of the pages. And I was actually featured in that video. And I forgot to mention that it was a Montgomery Ward um, catalog. But definitely go check out that video. It was a fun video with lots of different personalities sharing their view on that catalog. The next item is Choose Your Own Adventure Books. And I had never heard of these, but it seemed like everybody else in the world had. Because when I posted this, I'm like, I've never heard of these. And everybody was like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, they were telling me all about it. Um, I think there's only one photo. So... I, I don't know why there's only one photo. I would at least like show all sides to help show condition. But this sold for $148.99. C-Y-O-A. I don't know what. Oh, choose your own adventure. <laughs> okay. At least I figured it out. You guys were all going to be like telling me in the comments what it stood for. So there's 31 of them sold for $148.99 plus shipping. The next item. Okay, so sometimes I will post things like this in my group. Um, I do a lot of jewelry lots. Either they're going really cheap and I'll share it or it's a bolo and I'm like, what do they see? And then I let everybody kind of examine it and put in the comments what they see that's valuable, valuable driving up the price. So on this one, it only went for $228. So this one I was like, it could go high. It might not. It depends if somebody sees like a gem in here. But if you guys look at how many items are in this lot, I mean, all of the smalls can really add up. There is a shell, probably has zero value. So there may be things that just kind of clutter it up and make it look like more that have hardly any value. But anyway, this sold for $228.50. And let's go to see other items. I'm always curious if this is something that the person does. So here they've got some jewelry. It looks like they like to lot their stuff up, which can be a good store to follow for somebody who, oh, looky here, guys. It's back. It must not have sold. They must not have paid. So right now it has three days. Or no, wait, is that the same one? I'm sorry, that's a different one. Let's go in and look. I can't tell now. Is that the same? Nope, it's different. It sure looked the same for a minute. Okay, it's different. But this one right here is only at $36 right now. So it's like somebody, maybe they have like an, 
they follow estate sales. Maybe somehow they get deals on all the smalls. I don't know. Pretty cool, right? All right. So the next item that sold. This is a Little Twin Stars 1976 plush toy. Sanrio, which is also Hello Kitty. Um, it's a Japanese. Um, it's a little doll. I'm guessing it says made in Japan somewhere. I don't see it, but this sold for $660, you guys. I thought it was Precious Moments at first. Doesn't it kind of look like a Precious Moments? Little Twin Stars, 1976. The next item that sold is this Spring and Garden Fence Flowers Cherished Teddies. Some of these Cherished Teddies have been really surprising me. I mean, they're made in China. They're not super old. I mean, it's got the Made in China sticker. It says 2009. I don't know. I mean, I just don't know why these are going for so much. I should do a video on these and kind of see which ones are trending and why. $204? I mean, most of the time I look at these and I'm like, ah, that's lucky. If it's, it's that's bread and butter and it's just going to sit. That's what I think about some of these things. $204. So. The next item that sold is this vintage double wedding ring quilt top, um, 80 by 80. And this sold for $175.60. And quilts can definitely be a bolo. Um, another area that I'm not super versed in. If you want to learn more about quilts, go check out the Fi resellers. Um, they are really working to educate themselves in this area and pass that information on to you guys in their YouTube, on their YouTube channel, not in it. Okay. This rare vintage 1950s rubber bear. This is a, uh, I think it's called Sun Rubber Company. So right here is what it says. Viceroy. Is that what that says? Uh, yeah, you guys, this went for $218 and 50 cents. So what I like to do is I like to put a tape measure right beside the item to help show how big it is. Um, what is on the back? Huh? Is that like a little snap? So, and the buyer paid shipping on that one. The next item is this, uh, Kodiak, Kodiak. Oh my goodness. Kodak. Bo Brownie 1930s turquoise art deco vintage camera. Super cool. Again, like I wouldn't know how to test it, but with this one, it's so cool looking. I may have picked it up just because even if it doesn't work, somebody might want to display that. It sold for $350 plus shipping. The next item is this Gunny Sacks Prairie um, embroidered dress. And this one sold for $405. This is a cool picture. It kind of shows multiple views in one photo. And yeah, Gunny Sacks is definitely a bolo. Um, some go for really big money and some only go for like $100 or $200. But that's still fantastic in my opinion. And this one belonged to Leah's Bits and Pieces. I know... She sold, I know she sold at least three of these, um, but definitely go check out Leah's Bits and Pieces, her eBay store. That's what it looks like. E Leah, man, I cannot talk tonight. I apologize, you guys. Leah has been a longtime subscriber and friend, and she has awesome stuff. I've featured her on my channel a few times, and uh, she's a bolo finder for sure, but these dresses are amazing. The next item I sold is this Pokemon. I didn't sell this. The next item that sold is this Pokemon, Pokemon Burger King 23K gold plated cards from 1999. And you guys, I apologize. I am like stumbling over my words tonight. And it's not like it's that late. It's only 11 o'clock. But um, these always surprise me, the Burger King uh, bolos. These sold for $150 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this huge lot of vintage and antique magic tricks. Uh, Ken Brook and Roy Roth. I don't know if that is important, 
but these sold for $590. So very, very cool. Um, I wonder if that lifesaver is vintage. <gasps> oh my goodness. That's so crazy, right? It's a lifesaver. So pretty cool. $590 plus shipping. The next item that sold are these vintage wa wacol, 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 wacol. I don't know how to say it, but um, vintage underwear definitely can be a bolo. I've talked about these before. I've got a couple videos on it. I think I have one that's called, um, oh goodness, people shy away from these items and then Another one that talks about vintage underwear and what to look for, because there are specific things to look for. Like, do they have the little pillow tab that brings up the value? I've got a whole bunch of tips in that video. Um, you can definitely check that out on my channel. I think that one is actually titled vintage panties. The next item is this original 1948 Indian metal can. I also have a video on tins, the top five tins to look for. Um, this one sold for $731 and it looks like it's still, um, intact, not opened 731. Wow. The next item that sold, this is amazing. This probably isn't something we're going to find. Maybe you could find this at an estate sale from a collector, but it is a vintage miniature, miniature dollhouse artisan sculptured piece. Uh, it says Marcia Backstorm Old Lady. You guys, this one item sold for $2,520. Does this not look real? I mean, look at the detail on the face. The mole on the neck, the eyebrows, the hair. It is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Just unbelievable. $2,520 plus shipping. I want to see what they started this at because that's a super rare item that you just never know if it's going to get bids or not. They started it at $199. So that's awesome. The next item is this vintage McDonald's hat. It has um, three stripes on the side which is definitely something to look for. If you want to check out my trucker hat video, I give you some tips of other things to look for. This hat sold for $255 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this Indiana Jones Raiders Lost Ark lot. Um, I'm trying to remember, I was thinking this was a member of the group that sent me this, but maybe not. I don't see any notes on it. This sold for $660 and the buyer paid shipping, but you can see lots of pieces. These um, card backs can also be a bolo if you have the ones that are collectible. I've seen people sell these individually for big money. So uh, definitely a bolo item. The next item that sold is this mason jar. Um, I, I'm guessing it's the color but they even spelled Mason wrong. Um, I'm guessing it was just a typo because anybody that is giving you the details, like the photograph here with all the different lighting techniques is somebody that probably sells these on a regular basis or maybe a collector because they know what people are looking for because they're doing these special things. And these might be things that you can do with your listing if you ever sell something like this because See how it shows the bottom there? That could be important. Um, this sold for $2,045.20, you guys. And it's a mason jar. M-A-S-O-N. Um, and again, they have M-A-N-S-O-N. -S and it still sold for that much money. So definitely a bolo. The next item was sold by Toledo Antique. And I'm pretty sure this was a consignment item that somebody um, gave them a big box of birds, um, not birds, actual birds, but items with birds on them. And there's one specific item. I did a whole video on it. Um, I can't remember what I called it, but it's an orange thumbnail and it's something like they almost uh, sold or 
I can't remember, but you got to go watch it. It's an orange thumbnail. It's something um, along those lines, but they almost sold something super, super cheap that ended up being a huge money bolo. Um, so go check out that video for the details so you don't make that mistake. But this is uh, Toledo Antique. They do live auctions on their channel, but they also do estate sales and stuff like that. And it's a really cool story, how they figured out that it was worth money and what they ended up selling it for. And somebody from their live uh, selling event could have got it super cheap. So go check out that. But this item was another item that was in that box and they decided to auction this item and it sold for $620 plus shipping. Again, you guys, that is Toledo Antique. Check out their live sales. Um, they have a great eye for vintage and antique items. The next item that sold is this vintage reel, five inch reel, 1964 color home movie, New York Mets. Super cool. This sold for $671. So this is probably like someone's home movie. Um, yes, it says home movie in the title. Very, very cool, right? $671, you guys. Makes you want to pick all those up that you see and find out what's actually on them, right? The next item that sold are these photographs from the 1920s up until the 1980s. They're political movie people. Some are eight by tens. Actually, I maybe they're all eight by tens. Sold for $250. So a reseller is probably going to scoop this up because there's 530 photos. They're going to cherry pick it, list some of those items individually because black and whites can definitely be a bolo. You got to find the right ones and they're going to make some money. So very cool. The next item that sold is this vintage Tonka WWF wrestling buddy with only two photos. He's got a snake on him. Uh, Jake the Snake. Sold for $380 plus shipping. Pretty cool, right? The next item that sold is this. Is that Freakies? Cereal poster. Freakies? That is freaky. Look at these weird guys. Ham hose, cow mumble, uh, snorkel door, goody goody, gargle, boss moss. I've never heard of this. Grumble. So tell me in the comments, have you guys heard of Freakies? Did you ever eat it and was it good? This is from the 1970s. It is a poster out of a cereal box that went for $386 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this Briar horse. Um, this one was purchased for $2 by HodgePodge. He also has a Facebook go, uh, group called Resellers Research something, something, something. If you put in Resellers Research, um, you will find him. Uh, he is a bolo finder. He sold one of the horses that he got in this lot for $660. This one only went for $53, but it was a huge lot that he bought and he did really, really well. But briar horses range from bread and butter to big money. So definitely be on the lookout. The next item that sold is another one of his from that lot that he picked up. So he's got $2 in this. This one sold for $146.50. 17 bids, buyer paid shipping. He did really, really well on those horses. But again, one sold, I think it was $660. Okay, you guys, I love this one. A member of my Bolo Buddies Facebook group picked this up. Are you ready? For $1 and it sold for over $1,000. You guys, it sold for $1,025. A garage sale for one buck, you guys. Is that amazing or what? And it's in really great condition. Oh, it's Faker. Masters of the Universe. He-Man original Faker. Still sealed in the original packaging. Um, super cool item. The next item that sold is this estate lot of antique and vintage tatted tatting lace trim and dollies and hankies. This is what the lot looks like. Um, I see these at estate sales all the time. Um, I'm guessing that some go for big money and some go for no money. 
So probably something you got to really know. And um, I mean, maybe I'm guessing they probably could have made more parting it out, but these items probably would have been long tail individually having to wait on the right buyer. But again, I could be totally wrong. So if you know anything about vintage lace, let me know in the comments. This one sold for $151 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this 1998 vintage 3D international trucking single stitch shirt. I actually thought this one was going to go for more because it's vintage and it's 3D. Uh, this one actually came from a member of the group. He picked this up at a thrift store for 50 cents. And there's his eBay store. Uh, sold for $55 with two bids and the buyer paid shipping on that one. So, But always put single stitch in the title. The next item that sold are these vintage Levi's 501 Biggie Redline Salvage Denim Jeans. Um, I don't know how I feel about this little sticker tag that says 62110. First off, as a buyer, I would be like, what does that mean? Why are they putting it on the jeans? Is it covering anything? I don't know. I just think it's maybe that's. So people know, I, I don't know. Do you guys know? I mean, somebody, I, I posed that question when I uh, shared it and somebody said it's the day they listed, turned into an inventory number, but why do they have to sit it on every photo? That's what I don't understand. Anyway, what do you guys think? $718 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this Michael Jackson Ebony Magazine 1981. Um, I don't know if it's just certain issues or if it's Ebony Magazine in general. I'm guessing it has a lot to do with Michael Jackson being on the cover. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Super, super cool. Um, $72 for that one and the buyer paid shipping. So again, you guys, if you want to see more things like this, I shared all of these items in my Bolo Buddies Facebook group. And again, I usually do the auctions kind of early on at more towards the beginning or when they have between three and five days left, and then we can kind of watch them. But I always make sure that they have multiple bidders and I go into the bid history and I make sure nothing's like fishy. Like, is it, um, two buyers with zero feedback or, and I don't know, you can usually tell when the bid history looks weird. And I do try to look at that before I share it because, um, there, there is weird stuff that happens on eBay and people bid on things and I don't know, but anyway, I do check that. So these are items that I felt like were legit. And I also pull out the ones when I go back to make this video, if it says that the item was relisted, I pull those out because obviously it was not a good sale. So um, yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go down to the description and check out the links to join my Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. Please let me know if you have any comments, um, questions, comments, concerns. Let me know what you think about this style of video. Did you learn something? Did you already know everything? Um, thanks for being here. Thank you for watching and have a great night. Thanks for watching.